Hello. Today I'm going to uh, do a fly called the Kineo from Maine. It's named for Mount Kineo, which is on Moosehead Lake in Maine. A few years back, I had a fly tying contest. I held it myself on Fly Anglers Online, a website that I, I wrote some articles about old flies for years ago. And uh, it was called the Luddite, the Luddite Fly Tying Competition. And the idea was use as few tools as you can and accomplish some cool fly. And to be honest, I didn't know if I'd get anyone to enter this contest. But it was just the opposite. I had all kinds of really cool entries. And uh, the winning fly of that contest was the Kineo that uh, Dave Woods of Ravenna, Ohio tied. Um, Dave, is, Dave made some uh, tools for me at, at one point. And uh, I guess he's not doing that anymore. I can't find any anything on the internet regarding his tools, which is a shame because they were beautiful. But um, yeah, he um, he tied it just an exquisite Kineo with very few tools, maybe scissors or something, uh, all in hand. Every one tied flies in hand. Roy Christie of Ireland tied his entire suite of flies all in hand. One guy who was a relatively new tire, not not experienced, really got into the thing, used no tools whatsoever to accomplish his dry fly. I guess he was like biting the thread with his teeth and uh, definitely in the spirit of the thing, but the fly kind of showed that maybe he was biting the thread with his teeth. I don't know. It wasn't quite up to Dave Wood's standard for sure. Anyway, it was a good time, and uh, let's get to today's fly. I've done this one on a Mustad 3399 hook, but you could even go bigger if you'd like. A lot of these flies were tied streamer size back when they were a thing. So feel free. I'm using red thread here because everything's pretty much red on the fly. And this is a uni A dot. This is a left slip I'm going to cut from Scarlet, uh, Scarlet Duck Quill. Now I'm going to cut a left white feather, white slip. And I'm going to marry the two together. And I want to wind up with two strands a section. So the tail will consist of six strands total. You could even go down to three strands, one, one of each color if you wanted. Now on the tail, the red goes on the bottom and the black goes on the top. By the way, these are all lefts, and they will make up the far tail because these quills have reverse curve. But you could go down to single strands if you want. And what I like to do, I just cut the strands a little bit wide. This is a right. Even though I'm cutting from the left here, this is a right. I'll cut the strands a, a little bit wide and just strip out what I don't need. Like this white is probably three or four strands wide. And I'll just, I'll just cut some of it out. Depending on what I see. Looks like three strands. I'll just cut the top one out. It's 
And I just need to add the black on top. And these are all taken from rights, and, and this is going to be the near tail. Tail closest to me, the tire. And that looks pretty good. Here are both tails together. About shank length. It can be a little longer. These these were these were decent sized flies. They were they were typically trolled on lakes. Trolling back then was interesting. You had a guy a guide actually, rowing you around all day. Those dudes must have been specimens. There were no motorboats, of course, back then. There were, of course, steamships and steamers, but hard to get one of those engines in a rowboat. On those main lakes, it would not only be rowing the boat with their sport or sports, but they would be towing a fish car behind it. So the, the rowing must have been brutal. All right, this has got a palmered hackle that goes the length of the body, so we'll tie that in first. By the tip, using the right angle technique. Trying to get all the fibers here, and I... Not sure I did. Very next thing we're going to tie in is a piece of small silver tinsel. And I like to I like to use metal tinsel, but you don't have to. I always tie them in Tie the tinsel in on the far side of the hook. And if I'm using mylar tinsel, which has silver and gold, I'll tie the silver side up against the hook shank. It sounds counterintuitive, but it works out once you, once you start winding. And that'll make the outside silver, even though it's tied in on the inside. That's if you're, you're tying on the far side of the hook, which I like to do because that starts the tinsel right underneath the hook shank. So it seems to, the, the ribbing seems to come out of nowhere. Now I've stopped a little short of the tail and I'm going to, I'm going to dub this and I'll speed up this sequence. This is some, um, some wax that I've fallen in love with. It's, it's similar to Marvin Nolte's wax, but it's it's 422. Um, four parts rosin, two parts beeswax, two parts castor oil, 422C. And man, does it, oh man, this stuff is, is fantastic. Up around the head especially. It's great for dubbing too. And the dubbing I used there was a Berlin wool that I sh shredded with my fingertips, thumbnail. Just a couple strands of it. I'm going to take the requisite five turns of ribbing, and I'm using a lot of force, kind of embedding this, this ribbing in the wool so that it doesn't move around and it's 
by using by using a lot of force when you make the turns, it won't shift on you. The wool won't move it out of position. So you, you'll get some fairly even wraps, which is hard to do over wool. This is a uh, cock hackle, and it's a it's as it's as small as I had right now in red or in scarlet. You want a real small hackle for these palmered hackles, and and it should be cock hackle. Um, and you know it'd be nice if you had one that 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 tapered a great deal, but they just don't. So what I do is I'll wrap this, as you'll see, and then I add another sh piece of schlappen or hen hackle or something dyed the same color beyond it. This fly has a lot of hackle. And I've, I've sized this, this is a hen hackle, and I've sized it so that it'll, it'll match the last few turns of the other hackle when it starts out. But, it, but, this, but this gets wide fast. So a few turns of this should really get us to where we need to be. Gonna use hackle pliers here. I don't don't have a ton to work with. Just folding back as I go. I rarely fold fold ahead of time. It can be done, but I don't typically do it. I just get it get it going and fold it back. Now I want to bind this down with enough turns here and I'm using a lot of force. Right there the stem actually broke. But fortunately, I was able to uh, able to catch some of the other. I, sometimes I don't know my own strength. And this hackle, I think, is going to work. Now I'm going to switch to black thread, and I've I've waxed this heavily. Take a securing wrap there. Get ready to mount the wings. The wings were put together just like the tail, so I didn't, I didn't bother showing it. There's, I'm going to say, six strands in each section. <clears throat> and if you notice, these sections are backwards from the tail. A lot of Bergman's flies are like this. The, the order of, of colors is backwards. And I would imagine, just looking at this fly, that it's another one of these that is meant to imitate the fin of a brook trout, but I don't know for sure. Parmacini bell and flies like that, that, that's, that was their reason for being. Brook trout fins were used as bait, and it must have been 
a very effective bait because so many flies were, were patterned to look like a brook trout fin. The Lake George leaps to mind. The aforementioned Parmacini Bell. Lots of flies. And the ones that were called that, that were called brook trout fin and fontanalis fin, etc. Right. I'm winding aggressively up the head here, trying to get as much coverage as I can. This is where this well waxed thread comes in so handy. You get no threat of a thread avalanche here with this stuff. I just did a a blue doctor full dress fly and it it was a dream around the head. I couldn't believe it. You don't have to use glue, you don't have to do anything. Just use this 422 um wax and it just stays together. It's great. A little bit of a, didn't get complete coverage there, but uh, here's the finished product. The glue hit it. And I'm fairly happy with this. And it's typical of a lot of the uh, main wet flies, predated streamers. And it's a good one.